I'm Christopher Clark, and I serve in Papua New Guinea, supporting Bible translation through aviation as a pilot and mechanic. My family and I came to JARS to do a helicopter commercial license add-on and also do some of the advanced training that JARS offers to prepare me to go back to Papua New Guinea in the role as a helicopter pilot there. Having God's Word in, in my heart language in English has just radically changed the trajectory of my life and it's given me stability to do hard things. Being able to see Papua New Guineans receive God's Word in their own language and then go on and do really hard things with God's Word just running through their mind and coming off their lips and a connection with the Holy Spirit has gotten myself and my whole family really excited to continue on to persevere through the hard things. Um, my friend Samuel Solang, his translation language group was helicopter only. He received the New Testament in his language fairly shortly after we got to Papua New Guinea. His family was quite involved and he went on to education and is doing adult literacy and enabling people to to learn to read and write and, and connect with the Bible at that level. To see our Papua New Guinean brothers and sisters have that deep foundation into the scriptures gets us really excited. It's two, two straight ends, somewhere between two and four 180s. For Christopher's training, it has been a group effort. He was flying first with Jeff Johnson, who did all of his initial helicopter training, building his skill set, getting him to the point where he was able to fly the helicopter solo. Mike Bunn also contributed to that and uh, did quite a bit of flying with him and tuning him up. And then uh, Fred Lehman, who was our helicopter pilot in Papua New Guinea back here in the States currently, with experience as an instrument flight instructor for helicopter, did his instrument training, did his night training, and then I've taken over his training on some of his more advanced maneuvers and ready to take his check ride. It's been wild and fun and terrifying all, all at the same time. The helicopter is really versatile and can do lots of cool things and it doesn't like to just stay in one spot. So it took a lot of, a lot of patience and practice uh, to get the feel for the machine and, and learn some of its tricks and how to deal with those. Now you're heading to the runway there. Get back it up a little, back it up a little. We're gonna keep them here until probably May. Uh, the PNG guys are asking for him to have at least 200 hours. Right now he's at about 100. And so we're going to take him along and let him fly, let him take the passengers on flights uh, so he can hopefully build his time and arrive on the field with enough experience. We have done phenomenal work as JARS with airplanes for the last 75 years but there are still a lot of unreached places. And a lot of those places are still unreached because we can't build runways there. So the helicopter is the obvious solution to that, really the only solution in a lot of these places. I'm excited to be able to take the machine into places in Papua New Guinea that I've not been able to see and be able to take what I already know of the country, the nation, the culture, and, and continue feeding into the program.